another tender heart sling program. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Glory to your name. All honor to you, Lord. All honor to your adoration to you, Lord. I give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. All the glory, all the glory must be to the Lord. For you alone are worthy of praise. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Thank you for the gifts of life. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for being our defender. Thank you for being our helper. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will still do. We give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I commit this, uh, to, to this uh, program into your hands. As always, take all the glory. Speak to your people. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that no one will escape your word in Jesus' name. The Bible says that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. I pray that your word will enter the hearts of your people, give them understanding. Everyone, and especially the men, as I'm talking today to the to the to husbands, to men, I pray, Lord, for understanding in Jesus' name. Let your will be done. Let your purpose come to pass in their lives. Let them be all that you want them to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light, in assessing, hid from eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days. Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light, in accessible, hid from my eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Thy great name we praise. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God. The one who alone has immortality, you dwell in a light that no man can approach unto. Lord, we we'll worship you. We reverence you. I adore you. I exalt you. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, no. I exalt Thee. I am thee. I am thee. Oh Lord, have your way, everlasting Father. For this God is our God forever and ever. This God is my God forever and ever, and He will be my guide from now even unto the end. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, take absolute control again today. Let your people be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, wherever you are watching from. I am Pastor Taiwo Iredele Ojubi, and this is Tender Heart Slink. It's an online program to minister to Christian singles and couples, to answer their questions, to guide them, to make them know the will of God, to encourage them concerning the thing, the things of God, the will of God, the ways of God, was about uh, relationship, marriage, life, ministry, whatever God wants us to talk about. This is to strengthen Christian singles and couples, and to um, be able to guide them and answer their questions. And I pray that God's will will be done in your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 22, an angel told Daniel that he had come to give Daniel skill and understanding. And that is what God wants to do through this program, to give his people skill and understanding, to make them know his mind. And I pray that 
God's purpose, what he wants to do in your life will be done in Jesus' name. You will have skill and understanding. You will understand the mind of God and God will be glorified in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, one of the scriptures we stand on here is Psalms 138, verse 8. Psalms 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me, which concerns us. The Lord's mercy endures forever. The Lord does not forsake the works of his hands, and he will not forsake us in Jesus' name. I want you to personalize it, say it to yourself, concerning yourself, concerning your life, concerning your marriage, your relationship, or whatever. Declare it upon your, yourself. Let's take it again. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The Lord's mercy endures forever. The Lord does not forsake the works of his hands, and he will not forsake us, he will not forsake me in Jesus' name. Amen. And we also have um, a word for year 2023. One of the scriptures that God has given us that we are standing on. And that is um, Isaiah 54 verse 10. Isaiah 54 verse 10. For the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake. But my loving kindness will not be removed from you. Nor will my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. So that is God's word to us in this year 2023 that we can stand on you can stand on it and you need to not just standing on it you need to also understand what god is saying what god is trying to do in your life and god is simply saying that no matter what may happen no matter what you may see no matter what you may feel or think that his loving kindness will be there he will be there for you. He will always be on your side. He's watching over you and he wants the best for you. So God wants you to put your trust in him and all will be well in Jesus' name. Amen. This note, um, this program holds every Sunday, same time. If there is going to be any change, it will be um, posted online. So uh, it holds every Sunday, same time. Um, another thing, if anyone contacts you asking you to um make a donation to an orphanage, transfer money to an account and all of that. Even if the person claims to be Pastor Taiwo Iredele Ujibi or the person claims to be working for me, I want you to know that it does it's um uh, it has nothing to do with me. So don't allow yourself to be scammed. Keep that in mind. Even if the person says so so that you can be prayed for and all of that. Just um don't um fall for that. And um for singles, God wants your relationship to glorify God. God wants your relationship to glorify God. If you claim to be a Christian, then handle things God's way. Let the word of God lead and direct you. Let God guide you, even concerning your choice of who to marry. Let the word of God guide you. God wants to be involved. He wants to be a part of all that you do. And uh, in your relationship, glorify God. Don't uh, get into immorality or begin to commit sins. And uh, if you know that uh, someone is already married, stay away from such a person. Don't go into a relationship with such a person. Don't destroy another person's home. And if you know that this person is not a Christian, but you are a Christian, then let, let God be honored. Don't go into a relationship with someone who does not know God so that you don't get pulled down. The Bible says a lot about all this. Let God be honored in whatever you do, in all that you do. Let's uh, keep that in mind. Let God be honored. And for those who are already married, God wants you to honor him in your relationship as well. Stay in your marriage. Sometimes there may be maybe some challenges or maybe some differences, but that does not mean that the marriage is over. It does not mean that the marriage is dead. Sometimes our flowers, they appear to be dead. And the leaves begin to wilt and all of that. But if you begin to if you begin to water it, it will come back to life. So if even if something is happening in your marriage and you begin to water it and you begin to nurture it and you begin to pray and you seek the face of God to know what God wants you to do, that marriage will bounce back to life. So don't give up on your marriage unless you realize that your life is in danger. Your life is in danger, and um, um, if care is not taken. Something bad might really might happen. And uh, if you leave because your life is in danger, don't jump into another relationship. Don't allow uh, someone to tell you that, well, you have left and uh, you need to move on. You need to remarry and all of that. No, don't do that. 
be properly cancelled, get cancelled by people who know the mind of God, who know the mind of God, and who will be able to give you the right counsel. And also for you, see the face of God, spend time in his presence, and God will talk to you. It's important to be properly guided and all will be well in Jesus' name. All right. Um, today, I'm, I'll be encouraging husbands, the men. Last Sunday, I talked to the married women, the wives. I talked about 21 ways to show your husband that you love him. And today, I'm talking to husbands. 21 ways to show your wife that you love her. Let's look at um, Genesis 26, verse 8. Let me start from there. Genesis 26, verse 8. The King James Version says, And it came to pass, when Isaac had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. So before this time, Isaac had told the, uh, Abimelech the king that uh, Rebekah was not his wife, that Rebekah was just um, his sister. And in actual fact, Rebekah was, um, you can say uh, she was his sister, but she was also his wife. So Isaac um, told the king that Rebekah was his uh, sister, not his wife. But Abimelech looked out at a window and saw that Isaac was um, playing, sporting with Rebekah, his wife. And he immediately knew that, no, she's more than your sister. She's your wife. Because there are things that married people can do and they should do. If you are not married, there are some things that married people can do that you should not do. Even if you have promised to marry each other. Even if you are already uh, maybe wearing an engage, engagement ring or something. But if you are not uh, yet properly married, then there are things that you should not be doing. So this, uh, but in this, so uh, Abimelech knew that. So when he saw what Isaac was doing with Rebecca, he knew that they must be married. No, no way, no way. They must be married. And he confronted Isaac. She's not your sister. She's your wife. And Isaac said yes, yeah. he said what he said because um, he was afraid that Abimelech would kill him and uh, so uh, because of his wife, to take his wife from him. Okay, so, but that's not where we are going to be. What we want to look at is what Isaac was doing with his wife, Rebecca. King James Version says he was sporting with Rebecca, his wife, playing and all of that with her. You know, in a in the in the kind of way that suggests that they were married. In Yoruba, they will say ontage and all of that. NKJV says he was showing endearment to her, showing endearment, loving her in a nice way. Another version says he was caressing his wife. He was caressing his wife, touching her in a, in, a, in a tender way, in a tender way, touching her, holding her. Another version says, holding his wife tenderly. Another version says, fondling his wife. All these things mean the same thing. There was something he was doing with his wife. He was showing love, making love into his wife, showing love, caressing her, touching her in a, in a tender way, in a nice way, to show his love. To show his love. And when Abimelech saw that, he knew that they must be married. So as a married man, you are supposed to do this with your wife. You are supposed to do this to hold her tenderly, caress, fondle, and all of that. Because you are married. All these things come with marriage. The moment you sign the dotted lines, the moment you are married then all these things are okay. They are not okay if you are not married. But when you are married, they are okay and you are expected to do them. It's in the Bible. And you are expected to do them to your wife if you are a married man. Now, another thing we need to understand. <clears throat> At this time that Isaac was um, caressing his wife, 
the Bible makes us know that they were not even young couples. Or they were not uh, a young couple. They were not a young couple. In Genesis 25, the Bible makes us know some things about them. In Genesis 25, before Isaac was carrying his wife, in Genesis 25, the Bible says in verse 20, that Isaac was 40 years old when he, when he married Rebekah. That's number one. He was 40 years old when he married Rebekah. And then in verse 26, the Bible makes us to know that Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to Esau and Jacob. So when Rebekah gave birth to them, Isaac was now 60 years old. They waited for about 20 years before they had those um, children. Yet, the years of waiting did not affect their love for each other. The years of waiting did not um, make Isaac to maybe lose interest or go and look for another wife, and a younger wife or something. He stayed with his wife. And um, for those who might be waiting for the fruits of the womb, let me encourage the men, just continue to put your trust in God. And the Bible says in this Genesis 25, that while Rebecca was uh, waiting to have her children, when she was uh, still trusting God for the fruits of the womb, barren, that Isaac stopped the face of the Lord. Isaac entreated God. He prayed that his wife would conceive and that God heard his prayer. So if a man is, um, if a man is um, in that situation, your wife is not yet pregnant, you are supposed to seek the face of God. It is not time for you to go and look for another woman or push all the blame on her and all of that. You are supposed to pray, seek the face of God. Do what Isaac did. And God will do what he did for Isaac. God will answer, God will answer your prayer. So the Bible says that um, Isaac prayed. And by the time Rebecca had those children, Isaac was 16 years old. He was no longer young. And then the Bible says in verse 27 that the boys grew. And Esau was a skillful hunter. He was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents. So the children had grown. They were not babies. To let you know that they, at the time Isaac was uh, showing love to his wife, fondling his wife, they were not a young couple. They were advanced in age, yet he was still showing love, making love playing with his wife in a tender way. So don't let your love for your wife, don't let it wane. Don't stop loving her. There are things you are expected to do. Continue, don't turn. And then sometimes you may see some people around you who are doing otherwise, who are maybe going after some, other, some women and all of that. Don't allow yourself to be, to be uh, swayed. Don't allow yourself to be influenced wrongly. Read the word of God. Focus on what you see in the Bible. Speak the face of God also. Surround yourself with people who know the Lord, who love the Lord. And if you need to be counseled, get counseled the right way. Counsel from people who know the mind of God. That way you cannot miss it. You cannot miss it. So, the boy had grown. Esau was now a, a hunter, a skillful hunter. Uh, Jacob was uh, dwelling in tents. And then the Bible says in verse 28 that Isaac loved Esau because he ate of Esau's game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. So the children had grown. <clears throat> so at, at this time, you can imagine how old um, Isaac must be and Rebekah. Yet they were, play, they were spending time together, showing love making love. And um, so all these things happened. And then in verse 28, the Bible says, Isaac loved Esau, Rebekah loved Jacob. But they did not allow that difference to come in between them. Isaac would have said, because you don't see things my way, because you love Jacob, then I'm not going to uh, do some things with you that I will stay away from me and all of that. They, 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 they have some differences. But they did not allow the differences to come in between them, to affect their marriage. So sometimes 
there might be some differences. You may not see things the, the same way sometimes and all of that, but don't let that affect your marriage. And also the wife should allow the man to be the head of the home. If, if what the man is saying, if what he wants is not sinful, then let your husband have the last say. But meanwhile, see the face of God. Both of you should pray. Encourage your husband to pray. So be sure that he's hearing from God. Because if he does not hear from God, then the whole family might run into trouble. Okay, so. So all these things happened before that sin in Genesis 26, where Isaac was caressing his wife. The children were already grown. They were Isaac and Rebecca were not uh, young in age. So based on that, there are some things that I'm going to talk about that uh, husbands need to do with their wives. But before then, let's see another scripture. Colossians chapter 3 verse 19. Colossians chapter 3, verse 19. The NLC says, Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Husbands, love your wives. Love your wives. And never treat them harshly. This is another thing that husbands need to keep in mind. NKJV says, um, Do not be bitter towards your wife. Do not be bitter towards your wife. Some husbands are bitter towards their wives. Another version says, do not be resentful towards her. Don't be resentful towards her. Don't be bitter towards your wife. Don't treat her harshly. Another version says, do not abuse your wife. Do not abuse your wife. So let's keep all these things at the back of our minds. Let the men especially keep this at the back of your mind. Do not treat your wife harshly. Don't be bitter towards her. Continue to love her. Support her. Support her dreams. Support whatever she is doing. And pray for her. Do not be resentful. And do not abuse her. And you find God increasing both of you. Blessing both of you. All right. Then last, um, last Sunday, I read Titus chapter 2. And I will just um, read uh, some scriptures there. Titus chapter 2, let's look at it from verse 1. But as for you, teach the things which are in agreement with sound doctrine, which produces men and women of good character. This is Amplified Version. Which produces men and women of good character, whose lifestyle identifies them as true Christians. So what you do show is to show whether or not you are a true Christian. What you do, what you say. How you treat your spouse, how you handle your wife will show whether or not you are a true Christian. There are some things that true Christians will not do. There are things that true Christians will not say. So if you are a true Christian, then let the word of God calm you down. Let the word of God direct all that you do. Verse 2, teach older men to be temperate, dignified, sensible, Sound in faith, in love, in steadfastness. Teach them to be Christ-like in character. And then verse 6 says, In a similar way, urge the young men to be sensible and self-controlled and to behave wisely. Urge them. Encourage the young men to be sensible, to use their sense, to have sense, to have divine wisdom and to be self-controlled, and to behave wisely. Then verse 7, And in all things, show yourself to be an example of good works. God is still talking to men here. Everyone, but today we are talking to men, so God is talking to the men. In all things, show yourself to, to be an example of good works, with purity in doctrine, having the strictest regard for integrity and truth. Have the strictest regard for integrity and truth. Do not tell lies. Have integrity. Be established in righteousness. Let God be honored in all that you do. Show yourself to be a true child of God. And then uh, it also says that they should be dignified. Verse 8 says, Sound and beyond reproach in instruction, so that the opponents of the faith will be shamed 
having nothing bad to say about us or about you. Now, there are some other things I need to tell husbands. It is good to be a man of prayer. It is good to love the Lord. And, and as a matter of fact, if you truly love the Lord and you are following him, the Holy Spirit will teach you, will talk to you to demonstrate your love to your wife. The love that you have, the Holy Spirit will tell you to demonstrate it. Because sometimes in counseling couples, sometimes some the man will say, oh, well, uh, he, he's, he's, he, he's very prayerful and that he doesn't have time to show love to his wife. Uh, he has to go to the mountain to pray. He has to, uh, he's fasting, he's doing some things and all of that. All these things are necessary. They are good. There's nothing wrong with praying and you are, you, are, you are fasting and praying and uh, going to church. But if you are doing things the right way and if you truly belong to God and you are walking with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will also tell you that you need to demonstrate your love. You need to show your wife that you love her. The Holy Spirit will also help you to plan your time, to, to know when to be in church and when to come back home so that you will have time with your family. Sometimes some pastors, they have troubles in their marriages. They spend all their time in, outside, in church, and they neglect the home. This does not bring glory to God in any way. God wants he to be glorified in all that you do. He wants to help. He wants to guide his people. And so if, so if, if, if the person spends uh, all the time in church, and, the, and there's and no time with the family. That is not right. And I'm sure that along the line, the Holy Spirit must be telling them, you need to go home. You need to do this. You need to do that. But sometimes some people just dismiss it. They ignore it. Oh, I, I, this is what I want to do. And they stay in church and they neglect the home. And then there's fire on the mountain. God wants to be involved. If we, if we listen to God, he will guide us. There will be no mistake. You will, everything will be all right eventually. Everything will be all right. So it's good to be a man of prayer. It's good to fast and pray and go to church and all of that. But you need to also create time to be with your family. Sometimes some people go to the extreme. They want to spend time with the family and they begin to stay away from God's presence. They are not spending enough time with God. They are neglecting things that they are supposed to do, neglecting their duties, neglecting their responsibilities to God and in the church. Sometimes some people are supposed to be in church and they decide to, oh, I want to be with my family and all of that. And they don't, they get things mixed up. That is not right. Be balanced. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Spend time with God. Do what you are supposed to do. Work on your spiritual life your work with God, and also create time for your family, for your wife, for your children. So keep that in mind. And then I also wrote in um, some of my books, I mentioned in um, one of my novels, Love Fever. I mentioned in Love Fever. I also mentioned in um, the book, 30 Things Husbands Do That Hold Their Wives. And I've mentioned in some of my um, messages to couples. Quite a number of men, they know how to dress well, how to look good, how to make money. But when it comes to handling their homes or when it com comes to handling their wives, they are not learning. They, are, they don't really know much about it. And sometimes they just feel that oh, when, when they get married, they will know it and all of that. But you need to learn. Just as you, you people learn how to do business right, how to grow spiritually and all of that, people also need to learn how to handle their marriages, how to handle their spouses. So some men don't really know how to handle their wives. They don't even know. They cannot read the signs to know how the wife is feeling at a particular time. But when you allow God to be involved, you will know what you need to know and everything will be all right eventually. So in um, in, love, in Love Fever, Love Fever, one of my novels, I mentioned there that when you begin to show love to your wife, 
the right way. That will keep your marriage going. It will keep your marriage strong. When you are showing love to your wife, it will break down barriers. Sometimes barriers come up in marriage between the man and his wife. But when you begin to show love, and at the same time you are praying, the barriers will be broken down. I also said in the book, in that novel, Love Fever, that you need to make your wife know that you love her. Sometimes some men will say, well, I love her. Well, maybe she doesn't know, but I love her. You need to make her know. Let her know that you love her. She can't read your mind. She will know that you love her by what you do, by what you say, by how you handle her. Don't forget what we read about Isaac. He was caressing his wife, fondly his wife, playing with his wife. He created time to be with his wife. And that will make your wife know that mm, my husband loves me. I also uh, wrote in that book, Love Fever, that when you are showing love to your wife, that will help to maintain love and unity between both of you. It will help to maintain love and unity. And it will also make your wife to be more agreeable. When you are showing love, it will make her to be more agreeable. She, it, it helps to, it will help her to cooperate with you. It will help her. So let's keep all these things in mind. Now, let's mention, because of time, let's go into some of those ways to show your wife that you love her. <clears throat> so based on Isaac and Rebecca's uh, story and um, the other scriptures I read, number one, to show your wife that you love her, spend time with her, play with her, laugh together, play with her laugh together, spend time together. That's number one. Number two, hold her tenderly and touch her without necessarily wanting sex. Some men don't touch their wives unless it's time for sex or, or unless they want something. That's when they will touch her. But if you are, you are in showing love to her, that you love her, you care about her, you can just touch her, hold her and all of that without having sex in mind. You just want to bring her close. You just want to touch her. So that will make her know that, oh, my husband loves me and all of that. And she will draw closer to you. So hold her tenderly or touch her without necessarily wanting sex. Number three, don't abuse her. Don't abuse her. So men call their wives names, all manners of terrible names. You are crazy. You are this, you are that. That is not right. And sometimes you find some Christian men who do all that. That does not make you a true child of God. So don't abuse her. Number four, don't be harsh with your wife. Don't be harsh with her. Be tender. Handle her with tenderness. Number five, tell your wife that you love her often. Tell her that you love her often. She wants to hear you say that. She wants to hear, I love you from you. She wants to hear it from you. Some men, some people are not um, uh, used to saying such things. They find it um, somehow, they are shy about saying I love you, but it doesn't hurt. It will help your marriage to say that. And your wife wants you to say that. It assures her of your love. So tell her that you love her often. Number six, don't let another woman or another man or anything or any difference come between you and your wife. Don't let another woman, nothing come between you and your wife. Continue to love your wife. Seven, buy your wife surprise gifts from time to time. And this, when I'm talking about gifts, they don't have to be expensive gifts. It can just be a cup of ice cream. It can be a small book or something that you think she will appreciate, or maybe a pair of earrings, or um, whatever. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. Buy her surprise gifts from time to time, and you'll find that she will, be, she will smile. Oh, thank you. And that will maintain your, your, uh, the, the relationship. It will help. So buy her surprise gifts from time to time. Eight, let her know she's important to you by what you do, what you say, by discussing things with her, carrying her along, 
seeking her opinion. What do you think about this and all of that? Even though you are still the man, you are going, you have the last say, you are going to make the decision, but carry her along. Let her know that she's important to you. Get her opinion on matters, especially matters that will also affect her, that will affect her. Get her opinion. Let her know she's important to you. Don't ignore her. Number nine, another thing to do that will make your wife know that you love her, do things together, like eating together. Don't um, be on your own. Don't be on your own. Don't ask for space. So there are men who ask for space. Give me some space and all of that. When you are married, there's nothing like that. Do things together. Eat together. Go for a walk together. Plan together. Make decisions together as much as possible. Do things together. That will make her know that hmm, my husband loves me. It will strengthen your marriage. Number 10, compliment her regularly. Compliment her regularly. Look for things to say that will make her happy, that will make her smile. Mm, you look beautiful. Oh, this looks good on you. Oh, this color is, it looks very beautiful on you. You look beautiful. I like your hair. I, I know all of that. You find your wife smiling and she's radiating and she's glowing. She's glowing. She's happy. That will strengthen your marriage. That will strengthen your marriage. Don't keep to yourself like, oh, I, I'm not you. I don't do that. I, I'm not used to that. Oh, no, I know of that. Oh, that's, that's just me. I don't compliment people. When you are married, you have to compliment your wife. You have to compliment your wife. And don't um, say that, oh, well, it's not me and all of that. You can learn it. Learn all these things. Sometimes um, some people are shy about showing or, uh, affection, but you have to do it. It will help you. And if you ask the Holy Spirit, he will tell you, yes, you need to learn this. And the Holy Spirit will even teach you what to do. He will teach you. Eleven, listen to your wife. Listen to your wife. Everyone wants to be listened to. And your wife is not an exception. Listen to your wife. When she's trying to talk to you, let her put whatever you are doing. Set it aside. Don't read uh, newspapers at the time she's trying to talk to you. Or maybe you are watching TV and you are telling her, go on, I'm listening. And you are watching TV. Go on, oh, go on, go on. And you are looking at the newspaper. No. When you want to, when she, you, you realize that your wife wants to talk to you, Give her your undivided attention. Oh, uh, my dear, Dali, whatever you call her. And you look at her and listen to her. That will make her know that my husband cares. My husband cares. So give her your undivided attention. Number 12. When you need to correct your wife, do it with tenderness. Don't put her down. Don't put her down. Don't yell at her. Don't call her names and all of that. If you need to correct her, do it with tenderness. 13. Don't forget her birthday and other special occasions. Her birthday, your wedding anniversary. And uh, it's not enough to say happy birthday. That's an opportunity to do something nice for her. Give her a gift. Do something. Don't uh, wish her happy birthday empty-handed. And as I said before, the gift doesn't have to be expensive. Something small, whatever. And she will appreciate it. And she will be able to say, my husband gave me this. So let's keep it in mind. Let's keep it in mind. Number 14. Take her out from time to time. Every wife loves to be taken out by her husband. Take her out, maybe to, if you can afford it, maybe to a restaurant or you just uh, go somewhere and all of that. Take her out. Wives um, love it. If they have the time, they love it. They love to spend time with their husbands. They love their husbands. They love their marriage. They want their marriage. So spending time together, taking her out, going out with her, taking her to a restaurant and all of that will make her um, uh, happy and that's another way to show that yes I love my wife 15 prefer her over others prefer her over others every woman wants to be 
the number one in her husband's life. So prefer her over others. 16. Try to show her that you care when she's down or when she's sick. Try to show her that you care. Ask her how she's feeling. What, how do you feel? What can I do to make things better? And all of that. Show that you care. Stay with her if you can. If you can. Talk to her. Give her what, uh, try to attend to her needs. What do you need? Have you eaten? And all of that. Show that you care. Some husbands don't do that. If the wife is sick, she's on her own. They just walk out. They are not even there. And all of that. That is not how to handle the marriage. That is not how to handle the marriage. Show that you care. It's important. Number 17. Be willing to lend a helping hand around the house. Be willing to lend a helping hand around the house. If a man is assisting his wife, it doesn't mean that he is stupid. It simply shows that he loves his wife. He cares about his wife. So be willing to lend a helping hand. If there's something that um, needs to be done, assist her. Especially if it's something that's heavy that she won't be able to do easily. Do it for her. Do things without being asked to do them. That shows that you love her. Uh, number 18. Find out how you can meet her sexual needs. Find out how you can meet her sexual needs. And in the book, uh, in the novel I'm working on now, uh, Broken Together, I said something about this. Find out how you can meet her sexual needs. Ask her. Don't let uh, love making or sex be about you alone. Find out how you can meet her sexual needs. What do you want? Ask her, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And not, uh, is this okay for you? And all of that. Involve your wife. Don't let don't focus on yourself, on your own, uh, enjoying yourself alone or having fun alone. Involve your wife, carry her along, let her also feel your love. 19. Avoid criticizing your wife in the presence of others. Criticizing her, yelling at her, calling her names, insulting her, disrespecting her in the presence of others does not show love. And it does not show sense. It does not show that that man has sense or that the man has the fear of God. So if I have sense, if I love my wife, and if I, if I know God, if I'm a child of God, then I will not um, criticize her in the presence of others. If, that's, if, if anything needs to be said, wait until you get to and settle it. 20. Pray for her and with her on a daily basis. Pray for her and with her. Pray every day for her and with her on a daily basis. Call her. And sometimes there might be there might be some misunderstandings or maybe uh, some disagreements. You are not uh, you are, you are upset or something. Don't because of that stop praying with her. Don't say well because I'm I'm not happy because um, something happened and then you stop praying. You don't pray for a week. You don't pray with your wife for two weeks. You just leave her and you are doing your own thing. That is not right. Don't allow Satan to hijack the marriage, to get involved. Don't allow that. Pray, even if, I, like we, I, I, I talked about Isaac and Rebecca, there were some differences, but that did not affect their marriage. He was still showing love, caressing his wife, hold, holding his wife. So, some things might happen that will upset you, but continue to pray for her. When it is time for prayer, call her. And it's possible that you call her and she's giving you the cold shoulder and she's like shrugging. She's not interested. Call her. We need to pray. Let's pray. Just encourage her. Take, let the man take the lead. Take the lead. Encourage her. Let her know that. No, whatever happened or whatever the issue is, we'll come back to that. But let us pray. That is how to be the man. So pray for her and with her on a daily basis. Uh, 21. Value what she tells you. Don't brush her aside or ignore her suggestions. Value what she tells you. Unless if you feel that her opinion is um, not going to work or her opinion is not right. But if, if what she's saying makes sense, consider it. Consider it. Pray about it. And uh, see what can be done. I there was um, I heard about um, a wife. The husband said uh, that he felt that God was calling him to into ministry, to be in ministry, to do some things. And um, 
He told his wife, he wanted her cooperation, and the wife said that she was not going to cooperate with him. She was not going to uh, support him in any way unless he built a house for her first. And I was like, a house for you? What has that got to do with the issue of what the man is saying? To build a house, a house, not, um, she did say, uh, well, uh, well, on, until you until you do something for the world, maybe you put money down for food, or maybe uh, uh, you you do something to for my body. She said a house to build a house before she will support his ministry. That's that's so wrong. That's so wrong. That's that doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't make sense at all. But some some wives are like that. So if you have such a wife who doesn't seem to understand the ways of God. Then the man should encourage her in the things of God. Get um, help for her. Get help for her. Get um, people who, who will be able to cancel her, who will be able to uh, influence her positively. Get Bring them near her. Bring them to her. Involve your wife to get close to such people. Encourage her to get close to them. And let her go with you to church. Be sure that you are in the right church where you are hearing the word of God, where your wife can grow, your children can grow, and all of that. So get help for your wife. Your wife is supposed to be your helpmate. But sometimes the helpmate needs help herself. So it's possible to find such wives. They are helpmates, but they need help. They really don't know much about the ways of God. So get help, to, uh, get help for her. So, But if your wife um, is a godly woman, and she's giving you an advice that is um it would be right to consider her advice consider her advice value her opinion look uh, consider what she's saying pray about it and make the right decision that will greatly help i've already mentioned 21 let me give you one extra apologize when you are wrong if you know that you are wrong don't say i'm sorry it does not reduce you in any way apologize when you are wrong I know we'll be well in Jesus' name. So I pray for you for every married man that will come across this. I pray that the peace of God will be in your home, will be in your hearts, will surround you in the mighty name of Jesus. The peace of God that passes all understanding, let it permeate your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that your marriage will get sweeter and sweeter, better and better in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will make you the kind of man he wants you to be. God will make you great. God will provide for you. You will not lack all that you need to be the right head for your home in the mighty name of Jesus. Spiritually, the Lord will make you strong. Financially, physically, in all ways, the Lord will make you strong and all will be well. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall you be in Jesus' name. If um, if um, you feel that um, that um, maybe you have questions, or maybe yes, sometimes the man wants to do what is right, but his wife is being difficult. His wife is uh, not uh, cooperating with him, and sometimes it that makes it difficult for the man. It can be so frustrating. You want to. Please go, but your wife, my wife, if you are like that, your wife is the problem and uh, you need help for her, feel free to contact me and uh, on WhatsApp and I'll be glad to help you. Amen. It shall be well in Jesus' name. All will be well. Um, we'll, say, uh, we'll sing this song, God Give Us Christian Homes. Um, God give us Christian homes. And that's my prayer for you. That your home will be an example of a Christian home. In Jesus' name. All right. If you know it, let's sing along. God give us Christian homes. Homes where the Bible is loved and taught. Homes where the masters will be sought. Homes ground we built in your love has wrought. God give us grace and homes. God give us grace and homes. God give us grace and homes. Homes where the Father is true and strong. 
Homes that are free from the blight of wrong. Homes that are joyous with love and song. God give us Christian homes. God give us Christian homes. God give us Christian homes. Homes where the mother in care requests. Strives to show others your way is best. Homes where God is greatly loved and blessed. God give us grace and homes. God give us grace and homes. God give us grace and homes. Homes where the children are led to know Christ in his beauty who loves and so. Homes where the altar first born and glow. God give us grace and homes. God give us grace and homes. Amen. I'll see you next Sunday, same time. God bless you. Bye for now.